share my screen first. I guess you can see my screen. Yes, Oja. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for organization and uh, still not easy to speak in front of the computer actually. I need to see the audience actually, students, but this is what we have nowadays. Uh, so first of all, um, I can mention about a little, little bit what I'm doing. Uh, I'm working uh, in the Middle East Technical University Institute of Marine Science. Um, uh, my main topics in here actually, I'm working on the uh, some model organism, tunicates, uh, the primitive chordates, the model organism, uh, marine stem cell, and also some regenerative studies and immunohistochemistry studies. Uh, but beside of that, of course, we in here uh, also I'm working on the other field on population genetics and um, uh, in this presentation, I will show you a few uh, our research on population genetics and also in the second part, I will have uh, actually I have three parts presentation. It's kind of separated from each other, but I will try to, of course, attend they all connected. Uh, the first part um, will be on molecular markers. Second part will be ecogenomics, uh, reverse genetics, gene silencing process. In that part, I will mention about what I am doing about this um, ecogenomics and um, reverse genetics and gene silencing uh, part. And the last part will be on uh, molecular evolution. Of course, it will be very brief. There are many things we need to talk about, but uh, in the short period of time, I will summarize. Uh, I will focus just uh, on some uh, regulatory element and uh, um, uh, some evolution of some genes. Okay, uh, so I'm. Um, uh, Okay, maybe uh, I graduated from the Marshall University um, and then uh, I did uh, the, my master and PhD, not uh, BS from Atatürk University Education Faculty, Biology. And then Marshall University C, master and PhD. And then I started to work with uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Inji Togan from the METU as a postdoc and work on the population genetics. Then I uh, went to the Israel, Israel is, is, uh, Oceanographic and Immunologic Institute at uh, um, um, Biotechnology Department. I work uh, there in DNA barcoding, population genetics, and on the model organism of uh, also these uh, stem cell uh, studies. And from 2017, I'm working in Med uh, Middle East Technical University Institute of Marine Sciences as an uh, assistant professor. So I'm going to start with the uh, first part. Um, and uh, as I told, I will try to make a short, it will be brief information because there are a lot of things we need to uh, discuss, we need to, I need to actually explain. So it's the first, why we need to use molecular markers. Uh, okay, be, be, beside, uh, before the first, actually, uh, I used two um, books in uh, when I prepared my presentation on uh, molecular ecology and the other conservation genetics uh, of uh, population. Uh, beside of those, also, I used some articles that I gave the reference of that articles in, in, the, uh, uh, the, in the text, in the presentation. Uh, outline of the uh, presentation will be understanding molecular markers, models of inheritance, nuclear versus organelle, animal and plant mitochondrial DNA, um, plant chloroplast, plastic DNA, haploid chromosome, uniparental markers. Uh, molecular, then second part will be on the second part of this presentation actually, will be molecular markers. Uh, co-dominant and dominant markers. I will try to okay use my time efficiently. I have a lot of things. 
So uh, why we need, uh, first I can ask, why we need molecular markers? Um, of course, uh, first maybe I will not see the chat section, okay. Uh, why we need uh, for molecular markers to understand genetic variation in the population? Why we need to understand genetic variation in the population? Uh, it uh, can be actually uh, answer of this can be it's very uh, wild because uh, some can use this information to protect species. Some can use this information to understand evolutionary uh, history of their population or some can use this information to, uh, to aquaculture, um, produce, um, you know, eco ecologically important trade, uh, the species or uh, increased, uh, um, um, you know, the capacity of the, the, the individual or species what are they are uh, working on. Uh, so, is a in briefly, uh, this is uh, this information can use uh, in many different uh, perspectives. So, uh, we are um, some models of uh, inheritance. We are uh, the result of the one egg and one sperm as a human. And, uh, most of the metals are like that. Of course, some of them has a clone reproduction system, uh, cloning, so it's a, they don't need uh, uh, egg and sperm. So it's after the fertilization, after the development process, uh, we are uh, shaping actually. So uh, in molecular ecology, uh, of course, calculation of genetic relationship often takes a lot of time, not like, uh, like in here, it's one generation. It can take uh, uh, the count transmission of a uh, thousand, sometimes millions of years, uh, millions of generation. So um, uh, it is not easy process. Uh, and the other thing we need to take into account, not all DNA is inherited in the same way. Uh, I'm going to show you that part. Uh, uh, so, uh, understanding the different modes of inheritance is crucial before they can predict how uh, different region of DNA might behave under various ecological and evolutionary scenarios. So here, nuclear versus organelle. Um, what we know um, as a nuclear part, uh, half of our uh, um, genome coming from our father, half the, the other half coming from uh, uh, from mother and from father. So it's a, a kind of equal uh, for nuclear, of course, but when you consider the other cytoplasmic uh, um, uh, genetic material uh, like uh, mitochondrial and chloroplast, it's not equal. So um, for nuclear part, we can say uh, we have biparental inheritance, equal amount coming from mother and father almost equal when you consider the sex chromosome is not equal, of course. Uh, in, um, uh, but uh, as, as a, uh, for many um, higher metazoan, mitochondrial DNA coming from the uh, mother, and for most of the plant, according to actual annual sperm and genus, mom is different. Uh, uh, for some of them coming from mother side, uh, parental, the other side is uh, maternal. So here, uh, I'm going to give information about the uh, mitochondrial DNA, animal mitochondrial DNA, plant mitochondrial DNA, plant plastid, and some gene uh, that has um, only one um, allele, that uh, sex chromosome. And then uh, I will mention about which kind of marker, uh, which kind of uh, tool uh, uh, you, uh, we are using in the molecular ecology uh, to get answer about our question uh, that I presented the, uh, before. So um, 
Mitochondrial DNA, acicular DNA. Uh, it's the size of these circular DNA in the mammalian is around 15 to 17,000 osphere. Uh, gene regulation, uh, gene order is conserved, almost conserved uh, for uh, many species, uh, but they have very high nucleotide substitution. So it's a very high mutation rate uh, when you consider um, this is very important for molecular, molecular ecology and population genetics. They, beside of the control region, non-coding part, they have uh, shortened protein coding genes, 12 uh, transfer RNAs, and two uh, rivals uh, RNA. And uh, uh, so it's, uh, here, I, I just uh, uh, highlighted uh, some rearrangement of mitochondrial genes has been found in different animal species, but oral structure of the mitochondrial uh, arrangement of the genes uh, relatively conserved. Uh, so in the most species is coming from uh, mothers, maternally inherited. Um, why we are using mitochondrial DNA for um, mitochondrial DNA markers uh, in molecular ecology and population genetic study, there are several reasons actually. One of the most important one is uh, um, it is easy to work, easy to isolate, small size, uh, and it has a conserved arrangement, gene arrangement. And also when you create a primer, uh, most of the time that primer can, can, be, uh, can work the other species. So it's a, one with one universal primer, you can work a lot of species. Um, in, uh, for example, for cytochrome oxidase one universal invertebrate species, uh, we worked on so far actually more than uh, just I work, actually there are many different works on this uh, primer, more than three hundred different species. It's uh, so it's, there is no problem using same primer. And the other uh, various arrangement of the gene is conserved. Uh, the substitution rate is very high. Uh, so it is uh, important for, for a special population genetic study. Uh, so is the, uh, in general, actually, uh, substitution rate uh, this, uh, in mammalian 10 times higher, uh, higher than average substitution rate of the protein coding nuclear genes. It is important. The other part, uh, lack of recombination, uh, still uh, gene um, arrangement uh, means that there is no uh, arrangement of genes conserved and lack of recombination uh, means that um, crossing from the maternal or paternal according to different species. So is a, uh, usually uh, the offspring uh, have same uh, mitochondria with the mother or uh, father. So, and the last part is the neutrality. Of course, uh, mitochondria DNA is not neutral. It's, as you know, it's working on the, uh, it's the, in the organelle that uh, produce oxygen, uh, uh, produce energy uh, using oxygen, produce energy for us. Uh, so it's uh, of course not neutral, but the mutation in here is uh, uh, kind of uh, under the um, uh, selective um, um, a pressure. Uh, so is the uh, so most most of the majority of the mutation uh, uh, either neutral or deleterious mutation. So uh, because of that, it is also a, a good marker to work on mitochondrial DNA. And plant mitochondrial DNA is uh, uh, very different from the animal mitochondrial DNA. Uh, why? Because gene, there is no um, gene order conservation. Uh, because of that, uh, they have very high uh, rearrangement and duplication, and gene size is very high. So as you can see, it's the four, 40,000 uh, up to, uh, 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 to, uh, to, uh, to 2 million, 3 million bus pairs. It's very high, actually. Uh, the size is very big. And uh, beside of this, uh, okay. For some plant is coming from uh, its maternal, some, the other is the paternal. Uh, or uh, some uh, like these species, 
Pelargonium, uh, it inherits the B parental. And Sequoia, one of the biggest trees in the world, is the transmitted from the uh, transmitted paternally. So it's uh, uh, different actually. So it's uh, um, the heteroplasm is more common in plant when you con con uh, compare with the animal. And they have uh, also, when you compare with the animal, uh, mitochondrial DNA, uh, ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA coding gene is high number. And also they have uh, unknown function. They have gene that we don't know the function actually. Um, so is the, what I told the organization of the uh, mitochondria um, gene organization is uh, uh, regularly changed, but there is a something. Uh, they have very slow uh, substitution rate, uh, means that their mutation rate very low when you consider the uh, mammalian animal uh, mitochondria DNA. Uh, so um, the oral rates of nucleotide substitution in plant mitochondrial DNA up to uh, um, uh, 100 times slower than those uh, found in animal mitochondria. Because of that, because of those uh, uh, reason, uh, most of the plant um, ecologists doesn't prefer to use the um, plant mitochondrial DNA. Um, but this doesn't mean that uh, totally useless, actually. Uh, inside of the mitochondrial DNA, uh, they are using uh, plastic DNA, it's chloroplast DNA. Why? Uh, like mitochondrial DNA is uh, coming from most of the species coming from the uh, one uh, parent from male or female, uh, but uh, there is a in angiosperm coming from maternal mostly uh, in gymnosperm coming from uh, the paternal so the mother side uh, father side and the genome size when you compare the plant and mitochondrial DNA it's the uh, size is around 150 thousand was pairs the uh, uh, small and uh, they are structurally stable, not like mitochondrial DNA, plant mitochondrial DNA. And uh, also, um, uh, they are substitution rate uh, according to plant mitochondrial DNA is high, uh, three times higher than the plant mitochondrial DNA, but still uh, slower than the nuclear DNA. And uh, one of the most, um, you know, uh, uh, people prefer to use mitochondrial DNA for uh, the microsatellite region. Uh, there is uh, there is no microsatellite in mitochondria, uh, but there is uh, microsatellite region means that repetitive region in in uh, chloroplast gene is uh, it is a very good marker for population genetic study and coding re, um, markers. And most of the time, this, um, this part is um, a repeat in the plant. Mitochondrial DNA is the, uh, has uh, 80 uh, nucleotides and uh, simple like that motif they have uh, as a repeat. Haploid chromosome, the other part. Um, so, um, Beside of the environmental sex determination, many other species follow genetic sex determination. It means that they have chromosome that um, represent or identify their their uh, gender. Uh, these uh, these are um, most probably you know. Just I'm going to summarize it. Uh, for for mammal, um, some plants. Uh, it's uh, female as homogametic, male as heterogametic. And uh, uh, there, are, there are two chromosomes for females XX. And uh, also for uh, male, there is X, uh, Y. So is the male is heterogametic, uh, females um, 
uh, homogametic, has the same chromosome. Uh, in the birds, a reptile, some insect, Lepidopteran, uh, they, they are, it's opposite actually. Uh, male homogametic and female uh, heterogametic, and uh, we are um, using different letters to represent their uh, sex chromosome. It's calling uh, as Z, Z, ZW uh, system. And the last one um, in some nematode, some worm actually, one round worm, uh, and also some insect. I, I, as I'm not wrong actually, uh, there is a um, if an individual have two X chromosome is female. If have one X chromosome, it means that male. So uh, those are the sex chromosome. But uh, some. Uh, some organism doesn't have any sex chromosomes, uh, like uh, and any, any discrete sex chromosome like the monoecious plant. Uh, another um, thing, uh, the markers uh, that on the sex chromosome actually, sex-linked marked uh, markers, uh, as you know, it's X chromosome and Y chromosome. This is uh, they are carrying a lot of genes uh, in the X chromosome. There are uh, uh, 1500 genes in, in the Y chromosome. There's uh, around eight, uh, 78 um, genes on the Y chromosome. Um, so, the, why we are using this chromosome? Some species, um, it's easy to recognize from the phenotype the gender, but for some species, not easy to you uh, to to uh, to identify to uh, uh, say the species. What is it? The gender of species. You need to uh, uh, you need to check their uh, sex chromosome because of that. It is important uh, using the sex-linked markers. Um, so uh, another. Uh, I think some uh, some uh, features just uh, carrying with the Y chromosome. It's important to uh, cross back uh, uh, the, uh, to make um, uh, phylogenetic uh, work, phylogenetic uh, reconstruction. Uh, so it's it is another. Uh, Area that we can use the uh, Y chromosome, and for same is for W and Z system. Uh, so uh, here uh, there are uh, two part. This is a Y chromosome, so the autosomal region in the chromosome. Uh, these two part, uh, uh, the tip of the P, uh, the chromosome P and the Q arm. The other part is doesn't have any. Uh, um, just uh, just on on the Y chromosome, there is no complementary part and X chromosome. So it is uh, those part around the sixty uh, megabars uh, region is uh, non, uh, is important to uh, use important for uh, for uh, uh, for uh, phylogenetics uh, study uh, to construct uh, phylogenetics. Uh, um, background of the populations. And uh, uh, the other part in here is the, the mutation rate on the Y chromosomes higher than the autosomes. And um, uh, despite their higher mutation rate, Y chromosome sequence tend to relatively invariant, means that they are under the, uh, of course, uh, this is um, under the selection, uh, selective sweep. Uh, so this is actually explain the total number of Y chromosome, total uh, Y, it's very uh, uh, small actually. Uh, but still, uh, Y chromosome is uh, larger than the mitochondria DNA when you compare, and still there are many genes that uh, can give us information about uh, the population background. So and you know, this is another marker, uh, but um, for unilateral markers, uh, there there are some uh, 
uh, things we need to be very cautious actually is we need to be very uh, careful uh, what are those first organal behavior single inherited units um, uh, and therefore eff efficiently single locus markers data from the single locus allow us to uh, retrace the history of only single genetic unit. So it uh, cannot give information all the history of species. It is important to take into account actually. Uh, and the other part, um, uh, this, uh, um, the other drawback actually, markers that may not be a representative for the population as whole, just as uh, some part, uh, uh, maternal or, or paternal part, uh, this depends on, uh, on the mark, um, uh, these uniparental markers coming from the which, uh, which parent actually. And uh, one of the actually biggest problem beside of these actually uh, main concern uh, coming from the, this pseudo gene uh, what is the meaning of pseudogene? Pseudogene is the part of the uh, extra, nuclear, uh, extra, extra nuclear DNA. It's the, uh, after the uh, duplication attached uh, uh, to nucleus uh, and uh, stayed there uh, for most of the time. Most time, uh, they don't uh, have any mutation that primary attach. Uh, a primer binding site because of that when you use a primer to increase to uh, for uh, for uh, a polymerase chain reaction um, for mitochondria DNA you can uh, also uh, get a product that pseudo uh, gene of course it's shorter than mitochondria gene but still uh, have a problem so it's, you need to be very cautious about this, uh, this um, pseudogene in the nucleus. And in, in human, uh, as you can see here, so there is 150 uh, uh, this uh, pseudogene inside of the, our human uh, nucleus. So it's uh, in here, uh, I'm going to summarize the molecular uh, markers. Uh, molecular markers, there are many different uh, molecular markers nowadays we are using for population genetics uh, and uh, ecology, uh, the reverse genetics. So uh, nowadays, actually, um, it's kind of all the techniques uh, combine each other. Uh, we are using biology uh, and uh, adding the, this biology uh, the environmental factors to understand the effect, environmental factors that gene expression or uh, the, uh, the yes, gene expression, we can say. And we are also using computation uh, software, the informatics to understand uh, all these uh, as a one unit to understand all the interaction between environmental between biological um, uh, component, biological species. So uh, in the molecular ecology, most of the time we, we are combining the genetic marker with the ecological, uh, uh, ecological uh, um, part for it. Um, for example, in, in here is the, we are using the uh, salinity, uh, temperature, uh, and uh, also, also nutrient uh, to uh, count, to get information about population's background or uh, uh, using all of them together uh, to make total uh, summary about the population. Here, I, what I'm trying to explain actually here, there is a new concept. Uh, it's calling the um, uh, uh, system biology. System biology based on, as you can see, different genome, different omics. It is uh, also actually uh, the chemistry also, not just the, the biological omics actually. Uh, metabolome, pretome, transcriptome, uh, epigenome, uh, lipidomics and the, the other omics 
and uh, combined with the process, combined with the environmental factor and with bioinformatics, we will get at the end uh, phenomics, uh, information about the phenomics. Uh, so it is uh, it is new concept, very uh, useful concept to get uh, information about whole system uh, because we are uh, affecting from we are part of the environment. So uh, our mind, so we are affecting from uh, from our uh, environment, of course. So okay. Um, several factors need to be taken into account when they choose a marker. Uh, of course, it depend, depends on your question, uh, what you are working on, what you are uh, trying to get answer. For example, if you are working on population genetics, uh, of course, using non-coding marker will be uh, better. Uh, but if you are working on uh, the Ecogenomics, uh, for example, uh, uh, these parts, this coding genes, will be more uh, helpful to get answer for your question. So, is it totally depend on your question which marker you need to choose? And the other part, of, of course, depend of the money, depend on your expertise, uh, depend on of of course the time. Uh, there are already there, there are always a uh, trade-off. Uh, so it, there are actually, the, basically there are two different kinds of markers. It's one, it's calling the codominant markers, uh, the other uh, dominant markers. Codominant markers allow us to identify uh, all the alleles that are present at a particular locus. Uh, so it's the, uh, with the codominant markers, you can able to sue, you can able to check to both alleles, but uh, uh, dominant alleles uh, marker uh, reveal um, a single dominant alle. It's, it's based on the presence or absence. Okay, so uh, which one is more common uh, in, in uh, molecular ecology and population genetics? Uh, we are using the codominant markers. I'm, but also I'm going to give information about these uh, dominant markers briefly. So codominant markers. Those are just a few, uh, actually, uh, there are many uh, in general, actually, uh, information. Uh, Allozyme, one of the most ancient one. Uh, I'm going to give brief information about that one. RFLP, restriction to fragment lab polymorphism, also one of the ancient one, uh, as I can see. But today we are using this technology for, um, for sequencing. Um, com we combine with sequencing, actually, technology, these RFLP techniques. Uh, DNA sequencing, of course, uh, and uh, single nucleotide polymorphism, microsatellites as a codominant marker. Uh, the last three, uh, nowadays, uh, most common use uh, markers in molecular ecology. Also, as I told, I will give information, brief information about dominant markers. Those are uh, random amplified polymorphic uh, DNA and amplified fragment length, uh, length polymorphism. Uh, here I will give information. And the codominant markers, uh, here you can find information. What is the main uh, uh, things in here? Uh, as I told, uh, you can get information about two alleles, okay? So this is a microsatellite data, as you can see at the right and the, and the figure. Uh, those are individual, individual uh, uh, one, two, three, four, and uh, those are the alleles. Each individual has two alleles. As you can see, the individual one is a heterozygote, individual two is a homozygote, and going like that. In the uh, in um, dominant markers, you can say there are many alleles, but there are many markers. Okay, uh, for each markers, there are only one allele, one dominant allele. If there is the band, you can see there is. Um, it's positive as at, uh, at the perspective of your uh, looking for what you're looking for. And if there is no, you can say, uh, as I told, it's based on the presence of, of uh, or absence of the alleles. Not, uh, you cannot check the homozygote uh, or heterozygote station of the uh, individual. So um, I'm checking my time. 
So Alloza is one of the most uh, one of the most ancient actually markers people use for population genetics. I have never used actually this uh, marker. It's uh, based on the, it's using, um, allozyme are enzyme actually, uh, coded by different allele in the same locus. Uh, and uh, uh, it's easy actually, is, but need to expertise of course. And not easy to read actually uh, the gel because it is very uh, complicated uh, when you use a lot of allozyme in the same time. And uh, it's based on the, um, as you can see, the enzyme protein. So it's the uh, it's protein electrophoresis. It is a uh, uh, speed, low cost, and easy. But it has a lot of uh, actually uh, uh, weakness. Uh, one of the main weakness you need to sacrifice animals uh, to get enough uh, protein. You need to keep the protein at minus eighty. It's uh, not official. It's if you are, are working for a long time in the field, and uh, you can only be detect water soluble enzyme. So it's uh, if it's your question. It's, of course, it will give answer. But if not, it's not. So uh, this is uh, uh, one of the technique, ancient technique. The other is restriction fragment, uh, restriction endonucleases, uh, using restriction endonucleases, those are enzyme. Its techniques are FLP. Uh, this enzyme um, coming from the bacteria, the bacteria have this rest restriction enzyme. That to cleavage foreign DNA, actually. Uh, uh, they protect themselves by methylation, but they cleavage the foreign DNA with this, with this restriction enzyme. And uh, uh, we can use this enzyme, uh, cleavage your DNA according to the fragment size, fragment uh, number. Uh, you can say, Arzu uh, Hocam, I think your internet uh, is having some problems. Two different population other can close also. Do we have any um, restriction enzyme in, in, in eukaryote? Of course, prokaryote has, uh, but in eukaryote, uh, do we have any restriction enzyme? Uh, we can say, um, Actually, I'm going to, okay, maybe this, this will be more easy for me to see all the, I cannot see the, uh, uh, please, if you have any question, interrupt me. I cannot see right now any comment part in my computer, so I cannot uh, give feedback for you for that part. Okay, do we have restriction enzyme? I can ask this question. Not like bacteria, uh, but we have topoisomerase during the, you know, the, uh, the, the DNA replication. Uh, it's kind of uh, the, the gyrus we have, DNA gyrus, and with the topoisomerase, uh, it's the keep the DNA, um, you, know, you know, the spin, um, uh, avoid the supercalling that uh, kind of antonuclease, but it's not like bacteria. So how this restrict RFLP is working? Uh, let's say there is a, a polymorphic fixed site in here. Uh, this is the individual A, individual B. This is a polymorphic site. Uh, there is another polymorphic site here. But uh, the enzyme that you are using, there are more than four different, 400 different um, enzyme, uh, yes, commercially available to use this RFLP. And uh, let's say your enzyme recognize this polymorphism and the cut this, uh, the, this part and not recognize this one. At, and you will have for this individual two fragment, for this individual long one fragment. And you um, upload the agarose gel and uh, you will have a different pattern for this one two. Uh, 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 two uh, 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 fragment for this one one 
so this is the base on the RFLP study. And uh, polymerase chain reaction, notice they combine the uh, RFLP with the polymerase chain reaction. Actually, uh, one of the uh, most um, uh, main problem about the RFLP at the beginning, that period of time, actually, when first they used these uh, for population genetics or molecular ecology, and uh, was um, uh, they need to get a very high amount of DNA because there were no there were no PCR process at the beginning. Nowadays they add the PCR here actually. Uh, this is one of the study published in 2010. I was I guess I didn't write them sorry. And here uh, uh, they are using different technique. Um, for example, in here they use the terminal restriction fragment length polymorphism analysis. Um, for coastal, for uh, as you can see, they uh, using the community DNA, the environmental DNA for restriction polymorphism uh, technique, but not like the previous one. Not like, of course, uh, the first uh, first uh, type of the RFLP. Uh, this is another. Nowadays, we are using the DNA sequences uh, for first. Maybe it'll be better. Uh, the, it, it developed by two different scientists independently, actually. Uh, Gilbert and Sanger in 2018s, uh, they produced, they created the Sanger sequencing technique and they got Nobel Prize for that. And um, it was the first human ge genome actually um, sequenced with this Sanger sequencing technique, it was the, in 2000s, uh, it, it was it calling the first generation uh, sequencer uh, sequencing technique, and um, it was uh, it it took very long time and um, was also time consuming. Besides of time time consuming, it was very expensive nowadays. And uh, 2000 uh, between 2006 and 10, the uh, next generation sequencing uh, came actually. It's the, cost efficient when you compare with the Sanger sequencing, but still uh, it requires more time, not like Sanger, of course. And um, uh, so it's the, uh, since 2010, we have uh, uh, PacBio, Nanopore, and the other sequencing techniques this is calling the third generation sequencing. It's, uh, as you can see, cost uh, drop a lot and uh, it's very easy. Uh, very efficient to use this um, sequencing uh, technique. So um, I am need to go, I need to be hurry. Uh, the microsatellites, um, another marker we are using a uh, repetitive uh, part of the genome. It's ca it can be microsatellite or mini satellite or uh, those are calling variable number uh, of tandem repeats. Uh, so there is a uh, there is a motif uh, and there is a repeat for this motif. We are checking this motif in the genome. These are uh, in the non-coding part of the uh, repetitive part of the genome. Of course, there are some study uh, that it represents some of the microsatellite mutation. Some uh, microsatellite aging can cause cancer. So it's, uh, we are not sure about the totally um, totally uh, natural or non-coding. The other issue actually. And um, so is the microsatellite another uh, marker we are using in population genetics and the mutation rate very high when you consider uh, the um, uh, coding part of the genome actually very high mutation rate they have. And also primer when you produce one species you can use the other species uh, it's very uh, if uh, so it's uh, efficient to use. A uh, lot here is an example, uh, the primer produced for sheep and use also the goat species. They separated from each other 30 million years ago, but still uh, primer is uh, uh, same primer. Uh, it's working for two different species. And uh, here we can use microsatellites. Those are some of my work. Actually, I use microsatellite to compare two different anchovy population offshore in inshore population to understand there are um, there is any differences.
are the same species or now model organism or the schloss to indicate in art um, um, uh, to understand i guess my sound uh, i got the warning unstable internet connection and uh, uh, also, uh, I come. I use the microsatellite to compare different tunicates uh, in the western uh, part of the United States. Understand uh, uh, there are differences between population uh, or not. Uh, chloroplast another uh, the, using that I mentioned actually before. It's very efficient, very uh, informative um, for uh, plants population genetics or um, ecology studies. Uh, SMP, single included polymorphism, uh, one of the best marker actually. And uh, it's based on the substitution, transition or transversion. Uh, and uh, we are um, using this SMP uh, for population genetics study. Uh, it's uh, actually, uh, there is a, it has a, uh, when you compare with the microsatellite using SMP, it's kind of, um, if you have degraded DNA, uh, it's more efficient to use SMP because you don't need a large fragment, just the 50 base pair uh, fragment. It's uh, uh, enough, will be enough for you for PCR uh, reaction. So it's the, if you have degraded DNA, uh, it will be better to use um, these single nucleotide polymorphism uh, to understand population histories. Uh, genomics, there are, uh, uh, with uh, sequencing technology, there are many different genomics, structural genomics, functional genomics, comparative genomics, epigenomics, uh, there are many actually. Uh, structural genomics basically worked on the focus on the physical mapping Functional genomics uh, focus on the uh, the nucleotide substitution on fitness and disease uh, disease suspectability. Comparative genomics focus on um, on the molecular and genome evolution. Epigenomics, uh, uh, of course, it's a, a study on complete set of epigenetic modification uh, and. Uh, it's, it's a very new field, but also it's very important because uh, what we learn nowadays, most of the, uh, most of the illness uh, results of the, this epigenetic, mod uh, result of the epi epigenetic modification. One of the very common technique that they are use that using in the, um, in the molecular ecology is the RADSEC. Uh, it's uh, using restriction site. It's kind of combination of the restriction site. Uh, also, uh, they are here. I'm going to summarize. Uh, you can use one restriction site enzyme or you see here double digestion rat sec, one digestion rat sec, and using the adapter, of course, according to your machine. And uh, uh, so with this uh, RADSEC, of course, you need to use the next generation sequencing or third generation sequencing um, technique uh, to, to get uh, this information, uh, this sequence uh, information to do by informatic analysis. What kind of information you can get from this? Uh, you can uh, you can um, you can detect restriction site presence or absence uh, polymorphism, or you can uh, indicate uh, any indel or any uh, any uh, variation in the restriction site or SMP. So uh, those uh, it's give very um, uh, nice information about the population history. Uh, key points for RADSEC is important new methods for discovery uh, of thousands of sequence uh, markers in any uh, organism of choose. RADSEC makes possible population genetic studies of, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm presented that the complexity is feasible uh, genomes of any size does not require reference genome, so it's very useful to uh, use different kind of non-model organism, of course. You don't need to have the, any reference genome to, to use RADSEC 
uh, te techniques. Beside of the RATSEC, of course, there is a uh, PULSEC, uh, uh, just similar but using different uh, methods. Those are the dominant markers, uh, the last part of this presentation. Dominant markers is one of the uh, randomly amplified polymorphic uh, DNA. It's using the primer. Um, the, it's PCR-based technique, actually, uh, using arbitrary primer to bind non-specific DNA. And with this technique, they are comparing different individuals each other. Uh, these are mostly work uh, using uh, people using this, the forensic side, actually. Mm. Uh, not no, it is not much working uh, using for uh, ecology, but of course can be used. And the other uh, amplified fragment length polymorphism. Uh, those are also forensic site is very common uh, uh, science. Uh, it's fingerprinting. Uh, it's also used uh, P PCR technique, but beside the PCR, it's to use also restriction uh, enzyme. Here, I just gave the information about to what they are. Uh, RFLP, restric restriction uh, fragment length polymorphism, uh, restriction enzyme use. Uh, this um, randomly amplified used uh, DNA PCR based technique used randomly, random uh, uh, primers. And this uh, AFLP, amplified fragment length polymorphism, used both restriction enzyme and PCR. And they are using also mid adapter uh, to, to uh, of course, otherwise they cannot do PCR uh, reaction. Uh, so uh, those are those are um, uh, dominant markers. When you compare the codominant and the dominant markers, actually, they have some limitation. Uh, they have uh, some, you know, a powerful side and some uh, limited part. For example, allozyme um, uh, target uh, nuclear uh, PCR, RFLP, there's PCR based RFLP actually also. Nuclear organelle, nuclear organelle. So it's a, some, those dominant just the nuclears. Uh, here's the cost. Uh, and uh, well, one of the important thing actually, when you get information from the one lab, uh, it is uh, important to compare your results when you combine your result with different lab result you need to um, get uh, you know the, not not every time it's possible to get information combine different lab uh, result different lab uh, uh, for example uh, you cannot uh, combine the different lab studies for uh, RFLPs because can change according to uh, different lab condition, you can get different results. So uh, this is another topic. I don't want to confuse you actually in here. Uh, so it's at the end, what we can say, what we can say, there is no single best technique uh, to study variation in natural population. Uh, you can choose uh, this uh, marker according to your question uh, according to your uh, your individual your organism of course uh, so um, I cannot say here uh, these markers the better than the other markers actually so this is the uh, this is the it was the last slide of the first part of my presentation it was a lot of information I hope you were okay yeah, you are still there. Uh, there is. Okay, so uh, uh, here, um, can I? Uh, okay, in the chat section, I have. Uh, I have a question. I able to open here. What do you think about uh, usage of the restriction enzyme allozyme uh, with the advanced next generation sequencing method? Uh, will they contribute to be used? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I'm not sure about allozyme, actually. 
but there is also um, the restriction enzyme using uh, for different uh, sequencing uh, technique also you need to uh, for for example for second generation sequencing uh, it's a uh, rat sec for example they are using the rat sec uh, to digest uh, to make uh, small pieces uh, first uh, cut the DNA and then uh, making the next generation sequencing Yes, they are uh, using it, it. Is it? It was the question. Did I gave enough uh, answer? The effect. Okay. So, okay. It was very fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I had a lot of things to present and, and, and in the second part after the break, I have a lot also in the second and third part. So